Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, wherever you are and watching this and hearing the sound of my voice, God's love is reaching out to you right now. Praise God. And I pray that your heart be open to receive everything that God has planned for you today. Can we call for that daily bread before going to this broadcast? Join me in faith right now and declare, say, Father, I receive now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now then, we're talking to you about God loves you. And we began this week on Monday, actually, to look at the character of the one who loves you. So you would know what love is and that will help you uh, the kind of expectation you should expect from him who is love and so we began to look from first corinthians chapter 13 using this to, because he john told us god is love and so now here he is showing to us who love is and we we stopped at verse 7 yesterday now I'm taking time because you need to digest all these things. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So he says, love bears all things. Now I explained that to you yesterday. And then love believes all things. Whoa. Believes all things. I explained that to you yesterday too. When you come to that place where, because that's who God is. He believes everything. God. Now, now you remember when Cain killed Abel. Right? So, God showed up. Hmm. Now, beginning from Adam and Eve. Oh, we heard your voice and we hid ourselves because we're naked. God didn't say, uh -huh, before. How will not be? How won't you be naked? Think I didn't know what you did. No, God says, who told you you are naked? Meaning, God, who is love, believed what they said. Now, this is a hard, hard rope to walk on. But you see, the more you mature in God, the more these things become easy to you. Because the more you mature in God, the more dependent you will be on Him. As you grow in the Lord, you begin to depend on Him more and more and more and more. And as, as that is happening, you will realize how less on yourself that you depend. And you just begin to trust him. So now he, he says, love believes all things. And I told you yesterday how love protects you. See, love protects you. So when, you, when someone comes and tells you things, you are not supposed to be, I'm, I'm, I'm suspecting, I'm, I'm doubting. You are supposed to look, give the person the benefit of doubt. Say, okay, what are you saying? But then realize this. And you know, some of these things, when you begin to practicalize it, that's where you see the action of the Holy Spirit. That's where you see the Holy Spirit coming to help you. A lot of times we listen to teachings, but we don't act on them. And when we don't act on them, we don't see the help of the Holy Spirit. We don't see the help of the Holy Spirit. Testimonies are always concluded when we take actions. And it's when we take actions, we will see Him reaching out to us and helping us. Praise God. So I talked to you yesterday about how He protects you when you believe all things. Praise God. He says, hopes in all things hopes all things love god hopes all things it's like saying he hopes for the best in every situation so love is optimistic i'm going to do this i'm going to do this i believe and i sincerely hope that you will do it but that doesn't mean I tie my life on you doing it. 
Because you remember, the same, same Bible says, cost is everyone who puts his trust in man. Why? Because man can fail. Never live your life where you are solely trusted in man, even though they have been good to you before. See, people can be good to you, so good to you. Yes, love them, celebrate them, but they can change the next minute. Because man can be selfish naturally. If they don't get what they want, they become selfish at any time. So you must learn. When they switch to that stage, don't switch. Don't say, eh, so me too, I'm going to deal with you. Nah, this is character we're talking about. Love, love. He's, he, he's talking about who he is. And as, as we walk in him, we become him. We become him. So the more we walk in God, now this is how you should measure your progress. Because see, first and foremost, you now know. Let me let me finish this then. I'll begin to go into explanation. Watch this now. It says, hope in all things endures all things. Love endures. Now, that doesn't mean love is foolish. But you see, love have set mechanisms in place to fix things. And, and, and things will always, for example, Adam and Eve sin. I was talking to you about Cain and Abel. Adam and Eve sin. God says, then he says, we God says, who told you you're naked? Have you? Huh? All God needed to do was to play the CCTV video. You know what I mean? That's <laughs> praise God. Go through memory lane and say, ah, they ate the fruit. Well, actually, they ate the fruit. He said, have you? Oh, the wife that gave me, the wife you gave me, gave it to me and I ate. And God says, woman, what have you done? So he believed the man. The serpent gave me and I ate, this is the city and I ate it. Serpent, so he believed the woman. Love believes all things. Cain and Abel. Cain. Where is your brother? Am I my brother's keeper? I said, ah. Because I'm hearing the cry. The blood of your brother is crying out to me and it's crying out from the ground. What have you done? It's God asking a man. In blood, this guy, don't you know what has see? Because God was giving Cain an opportunity to speak. Jesus said it by your words, you shall be judged, by your word, by your words, you shall be condemned, by your words, you shall be justified. By your words, not what someone has done, by your words. Now, that's why whenever anyone does anything, check through the Bible. God doesn't take any action until he hears from them. Why have you done this? Why is God, why is God asking? Doesn't he know? Doesn't he know what we did? Doesn't he know what the person has done? Doesn't he see that the person cheated the other person? He asks, why have you done this? And guess what? He's looking for your words. And whatever you tell him, he will believe. What if I lied to him? He will believe you. How can you say God will believe you that I lie to him? Oh, oh, see, God me kupari kabai kadi sekete ya. He's not going to say to you, you know, sometimes you see you see prophets um display things, you know, people, especially people who genuine prophets who um walk in word of knowledge. And and sometimes because it happens in, sometimes in your, your, your ministry with it, and sometimes it just happens genuinely. Someone is telling you a lie, and you know the person is telling you a lie. Now it's left for you to say, Hey, I know you're lying, and this is why I know you're lying, and this is the truth. Now, if, if you've been in ministry, you and you begin to understand people, you will learn sometimes that. Our actions 
sometimes can destroy people faster than they destroy themselves. No matter how sincere you think you are. And that's why the more you grow in grace, the more you learn to keep quiet. I see that. So you find Jesus even on that cross. He said, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. After all those lashes, after all he suffered, he still stood there and looked at everything, thought of everything. I said, this is my conclusion. They don't know what they are doing. Father, forgive them. Why? He was walking in love. And what was he doing? This is what he was doing. He was enduring all things. He was hoping all things. His character. Now, people look at this and say, this is stupidity. But that's who God is. This is his character. <laughs> it's God. It's his character. He said, but, but then, what if, you see, when you depend on love, Jesus could say that because he ultimately knew that his life will not be dependent on their actions. Hmm. Let me tell you something. People can do whatever they want to do against you. It doesn't matter. What matters or what the outcome of your life will be, surely, what the outcome of your life will be, will be it will be determined by the character that you display. So the words you speak and the actions you take. Now keep this in front of your mind. That whatever my life is going to become, is going to be influenced by the actions I take and the words that I speak. Now, when you know these two important things, number one, you will begin to learn to keep quiet. Because a life in itself is designed to provoke you. Life is designed to provoke you to bring out what is inside you. So you get to that point where your money will be stolen. Not because, um, not because you cannot get money again, but just to see how you react to that situation. That's going to tell a lot about who you are and where you are. So they steal your money. They say, can you imagine? Can you imagine that thief? And then you begin to curse and curse and curse and curse and curse and curse and curse. And then, after everything, you feel sorry for yourself. But you see, those words that have come out of your mouth, you cannot take them back. They are out there. I mean, words don't die. They are out there and, and they come back for you. Because you release them. And so when God says, my word do not come to me void. I want you to understand. He wasn't just talking about himself. What God? When we speak, our words go. And that's why the Bible says, death and life are in the power of our tongue. So our words go and they begin to look for where they would walk. When they can't find anyone that will receive them, they come back to the speaker. Because see that word, it does not return void. <laughs> return void means, you know what, when something is void, that it goes and then comes back empty. Now, when words are spoken, they are sent to accomplish something. God said, it will accomplish that which I send it. So, it goes out and it goes to accomplish. So, when you tell somebody you are stupid, you release those words. Now, if that person is smart enough not to receive that word or let that word settle on him, the word looks for, it couldn't get to him. The next thing that word do, it comes back to you and it will work on you. 
and you end up being stupid. <laughs> that's the truth. Now that's why you you don't allow people's words. So I say you're stupid. Say ah, can you imagine? Can you imagine he said I'm stupid? Hey, hey, he said I'm stupid. Can you imagine? Guess what? You have already started acting stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because because you believe those words, and then you are letting them affect you. You see that now? But someone say you're stupid. Like, ha, I'm not stupid. And the best, the best thing you can control, because those those two things I mentioned earlier, your words and your actions, they are under your control. I remember in January, the Spirit of God began to teach me soberness. And, and, and he, I'll do a teaching on that one, one day. The Lord is going to let me do it. He began to teach me about soberness. And he said something to me. He said, son, get to that point where you take, you don't allow anything influence any action of yours. Not emotionally, not money, nothing. Make sure you take responsibility for every word that you speak and every action that you take. Then he said something to me very striking. He said, listen, get to that point where you don't even do anything because I influenced you to do it. Now that shook me. I'm like, ah, hey, what are you saying? Who am I? Who's talking to me now? It took me a while before I understood what he meant. Because I thought, how would you say even you should not influence me? He said, no, I will tell you what to do. I will suggest to you what is right. But you must receive my word into your heart and then own it up as your own. Oh, Ah, I see. Now, I began to realize that's really how you grow my church. You see, someone would advise you, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? I say, mm, okay, because you have said it, I will do it. You're being influenced. Even though it's for good, you're still being influenced. So, a day might come when that influence will be no more. And then you will turn to start doing all the wrong things. But when you're being influenced, like, hmm, you step aside, become yourself, watch those advice and instructions and say, I think, I, I think this thing is right and I choose to do it. Now, it now begins to rub off on you, it, you because you have just grown. The fact that you were influenced didn't mean you grew. You need to understand, even by God. The fact that you were influenced by God to do something, say, the Spirit of God is just always moving me to do what is right. The Spirit of God is always, it doesn't mean you've grown. A day will come when He will step back and watch you. So when the Lord told me that, He said, Son, get to, He was teaching me about soberness. Get to that point where not even me will be influencing you to do things. It sounded really strange. <laughs> yes, praise God. Uh, the more I meditated on it, I began to understand what he meant. I said, whoa, wow. That's the height of maturity. When your mind is now his mind, you begin to think alike. Wow. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray you grow in Him in all things. I pray the Spirit of God will rest seated perfectly in your hearts. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, since the Spirit of God is healing people right now, Oh, thank you, Jesus. I just heard the Spirit of God say, I'm healing people right now. So if you're sick in your body, it doesn't matter where you are right now. You can actually, I don't need to pray for you. He didn't say pray. He says, he just told me, I am healing people right now. So you can actually begin to do what you couldn't do before. Can you get up? 
if you couldn't get up before. Can you stretch? Check for the pain that used to be there before. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Get up. Do what you couldn't do before. Take that step of faith. No word of knowledge is coming to me. I just heard him say, I'm healing people. So I'm encouraging you to take your healing and receive it right now. Get up. Do what you couldn't do before. Healing has taken place. Yes, healing has taken place. And I would like to hear from you. Praise God. If you have been healed, come on. Send us a message. Our number is on the screen. Uh, addresses are all there. We would like to hear from you so we can rejoice with you. And if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.